short video kind of a teaser video because uh, I'll explain as we're going so last year I spent a lot of time getting the boat ready you see I did the rack here moved all my equipment outside I was all excited for season pretty much got everything done I got my anchor um, uh, radar reflector and I was all excited about the season and then the one thing I did do is I put the water tank inside if you watch any of my other videos and got the pump everything was installed looked all good Went and put the boat in the water. I had water down in the bilge in the keel. Originally, I thought that was some water. Um, I originally had problems way back when my keel cracking in the wintertime and water getting in. And I thought that was it. So, wasn't a lot of water. Was able to pump it out. A little bit would come back in. So, eventually, we did use the boat. We're in for 4th of July. We did use it on 4th of July. Didn't do any overnights. We finally had time with high tide, pulled the boat out checked it all out I came down here where the initial originally cracks were I couldn't see anything you can see I came in re bottom paint where I did investigation it's black um, couldn't find anything dinked around I went and checked my water tank install because that was the next issue was it the water tank install because I did put screw boards into the uh, cabin liner but I had checked all the way around and it looked like I had plenty good clearance so but the one thing I did do is I pulled all those screws out again, checked my clearances, looked good, and just to be safe, took my bolt cutters and clipped all those off. Again, additionally shorter. Put them all back in. My clearances looked good. I didn't feel any holes. I thought I was good. I think I just was busy with work, getting the boat in with another high tide. Put the boat in. Still seemed like we had water coming in. I didn't seem that much different. We did use the boat. Um... Stayed in for another day or so. We did use it. I came back the next day, and I wish I had video because I was quite upset. Not only that water in the bilge, we had water about six inches on top of the, uh, the cabin insole or the insert in the bottom. So my boat was really sinking at that point. Um, and I would have gotten video, but it was in the evening, and uh, my I have a new iPhone now. My other iPhone wasn't the camera really wasn't working. So was able to run the bilge. Got it pumped out. We couldn't take the boat out that day. Um, came back that next morning. Again, there was some water, but not nearly as much as it was the night before. Um, we pumped that out. Got the boat to the ramp. And uh, got the boat out. And then just the way the summer was, I came in. I'm going to show you real quick what I patched. I have some more in-depth video as I patched the boat. Um, sure enough, pulled the water tank out again. Checked my screws. And... I still really couldn't tell where the hole was, where the water was coming out. But we had enough salt water up into all the lower compartments that I decided, you know, I need to hose all that water out. I'm going to hose the boat out and um, and just get that salt out. We'll just build, pump it out. And then while I was doing it, I got the brainy idea, hey, how about I sink the boat on the trailer and maybe I'll be able to find the, where the hole is. So after I drained it all out, I refilled the boat back up to pretty much where it was and came out out of the cabin came out here and yes sure enough i could hear the drip 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 and i came out here to the back side i only you really can't see there is a little bit of a bunch bump because i didn't flare i flared it but i i'm not really concerned i'd rather have the patch be well um the rear screw um my cl the clearance is not even as thick as my finger i can't get my finger between the cabin insole and the hull that screw, I don't believe I drilled through the hole. What I did is I actually sent the screw through the hole. And it wasn't leaking that much when we first put the boat in. But after I backed those screws out and clipped them off, the hole obviously got bigger because we were taking on a lot more water. But, like I said, I came out here, there was a drip here. I came out with a paint scraper, just took a little bit of the bottom paint out, and it was like a pisser for an outboard coming out. So, the lesson learned is... I could have probably put a paint scraper under where I was screwing or drilling, or I should epoxy the boards to the cabin sole instead of screwing them. 
but I believed I had checked the clearances. Obviously, I the the insert must be kind of canted back in the, this back corner, and that's the only one it doesn't have the same clearance as all the other sides. Um, so I basically drilled, screwed a hole through my hull, um, which was kind of frustrating because even though I did get a patch before the end of the season, between tides and work I had come in the office, um, I had a trip scheduled to go visit my mom in Florida. The boat, boat never got in, and even in the fall I tried to get it in. So the boat hasn't been back in since I did the repair. Um, so it kind of stunk because I spent a lot of time getting ready for a sailing season. And uh, I kind of like sabotaged it myself. So you need to be careful when you're working on a boat. This is the first time I've had anything like this happen. Um, but there are some other stuff. The water tank now I realized I'm redoing a new ice box. I am going to shift that back. And um, I'm probably going to remount those boards in differently. So I just does, it definitely doesn't happen. So there's no screws going through um, the cabin insole. Um, so I don't have the issue again. But that should be the only one, because they said the water, the boat was taken on water, but it wasn't to the point where like she was going down in a day. It was going to take multiple days. But um, that little hole that was less than an eighth of inch, I guess in diameter, I'd say, um, maybe sixteenth, a little bit more than a sixteenth. Um, it, that second day, there was a lot of water in the boat, and without any, there's no foam in a skipper twenty. So, except for 800 pounds of key, concrete in the keel, she would have been going to the bottom of the lagoon next to the dock. Um, so, that was kind of bum. I got over it because I was more upset at myself. Like I said, having a boat, these things, <laughs> things happen. And today it's January 1st, so Happy New Year. I'm looking forward to the spring uh, sailing season. You know, I didn't get back to the Keys uh, last year, but I'm sure hoping to do it this year. I think the only thing that I'm really working on um, is I'm going to, I said, I gonna shift the water tank back a little bit because my ice box I decided to make that I'm making out of foam and fiberglass a little bit bigger um, and and the other thing I have going on is debating on adding keel wings to my my keel which this is a side project so I'm probably gonna shape them and foam them and I'll decide whether I want to install them I think that's my original shape that I had but then I went back and researched the seaward boats, and seawards have more of a shape like that. And so these, are, I haven't decided. I don't know if it's going to make the boat really faster, but I thought it'd make it a little more stable. Uh, Skipper 20 tends to, as you walk back and forth, move around a bunch. And then if I hit any crab traps, it pretty much definitely ref Okay, I'm back again. I charged my car camera up. Thought I had enough charge to finish the video, but obviously, as you can see, <laughs> power ran out and camera shut down. So I'm in my somewhat, somewhat messy office. Um, I think the last thing I'm saying, going over the video, is that whether I'm going to uh, manufacture these uh, keel wings. And uh, it's two options. One thing, it's going to add flotation to the back of the boat, which I could use. And also to stabilize. Um, the other thing is, um, thing of two for weather helm. My boat has, uh, with the fractional rig, has a very large mainsail for the size of the boat. I'm like, I don't, my mainsail looks the size of like a compact 23, uh, far as, or even the seaward uh, 22, 23. Um, and I thought maybe it would help with that too. But, um, and I think I calculated the flotation. Um, I have, it would come up to like 35 pounds of flotation, which with the fuel tanks in the back, um, if I did the outboard uh, motor, for the dinghy, um, it would be helpful. So again, I'm gonna while I'm doing finishing up the uh, um, refrigerator ice box, I'm doing uh, making, and uh, I'm gonna shape these up too. And I'll decide if I'm gonna glass them. I don't know if I want to deal with the work this year, so because I spent a lot of time last year getting things ready for the boat, I just wanna I'd like to get it in this year. Um, the main thing will be checking to make sure the, the patch work. So I'm going to get this video uploaded and I'm going to put the other videos together where I kind of like I have videos and photographs of me doing the patch on the hull and uh, how that all got done. Um, I was hoping to do it through the fall then got busy. Holidays came. So i um, thinking more now. I'll be thinking of springtime and getting the boat back in. Um, 
So really going to try to get back into finish, finishing out the uh, refrigerator ice box that I'm making. Um, and I'll be working on these, the, the keel wings. And that's all pretty much I have really th to do. I know my wish list really is a new head sail. Um, I got the roller fur furler in 2016, but um, I used the existing sail I had. And when I did replace that sail, I didn't want to go too big because it was a hank on. Um, now that I can pull it in and reduce the amount of sail on it, I think I could. It would help the boat if I had a larger sail. But I have to decide whether I want to spend the six hundred um, plus dollars on the sail. Um, I think. I don't know. Right now, I don't see myself getting rid of the boat in the near future, so it might make sense to spend the money on the sail. But, well, I'll see how things go on that. But I uh, definitely want to add the other battery. Um, and right now, I'm running a 50-watt solar panel with the 20-watt on the um, the water tank, a Jerry Jug rig, a fuel jig, a jug rig. Um, I may order a 100-watt panel and kind of re-rig the where the 50 and that'll go where the 50 watt is and i'm going to slide the 50 watt over onto the uh where the 20 watt is so i'll have 150 watt solar with the two group i don't know if we're going to go with just the 20 group 25s or try to squeeze into group 27 batteries um so there i think the other things that i'm thinking about doing is the battery upgrade my battery is going on or maybe six years old somewhere at that now so um but it's been holding charge pretty good um but the one advantage is it's only 108 amp hour so technically i only have really 50 amp hours i can use whereas i put in two two that are like 90 amp hours you know i'm almost doubling the uh the amount of power that i can use so that's the one thing so um but hope you're all looking forward to i know it's middle of winter but thing in the springtime and uh, I'll try to get these videos out so you can see um, you know what I did to get the boat finally repaired didn't get it back in the water but she was ready to go every the boat got loaded back up ready to go sitting on the trailer um, just waiting for the right launch day and the right tide and the right weather and it just didn't happen and you know it made sense to just wait till next season so hope you're all doing well thank you again fair winds and seas Thank you.